This is VOA News. Reporting by remote, I'm Joe Ramsey. Russia unleashed a barrage of airstrikes Monday on cities across Ukraine as the warring sides traded blame for a deadly attack in a pro-Moscow separatist region but made little headway in ceasefire talks with the Russian forces threatening to take what they call full control of several major cities. The fourth round of talks failed to deliver a breakthrough on the 19th day of the invasion with negotiations to resume on Tuesday. The United Nations estimates almost 2.8 million people have fled Ukraine. In the Ukrainian capital, the latest Russian airstrikes killed at least two people. I'm here inside one of the apartments in this uh, residential building that was hit by a a missile early this morning. Lots of destruction here. Uh, Kiev has seen an increase of violence in the last days, not only here in the city, but around the city and the little towns that, that surround Kiev. But today, the attacks happened here inside the capital. In this residential building, accordingly to Ukrainian authorities, two people died here. Some got wounded. Um, They say it was a Russian missile that hit this building. Uh, This is in the outskirts of Kiev, not exactly in the central area of Kiev, but this is Kiev. Uh, differently from uh, the, the violence we've seen yesterday in Irpin, uh, which is a, a town very close to Kiev. This is inside the capital of Ukraine already. Yeah, we shot for VOA News from Kiev, Ukraine. Meanwhile, a correspondent for Fox News, Britain's Benjamin Hall, was injured and hospitalized while reporting on the city's outskirts. Find more at voanews.com. This is VOA News. The United States is warning China there will be action taken by Washington if Beijing provides support to Moscow that violates sanctions imposed following the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. More from VOA's chief national correspondent, Steve Herman. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says China has been informed about what will happen should it provide military or other assistance that supports Russia's war effort. There will be uh, significant consequences, but in terms of what those specifics look like, we would coordinate with our partners and allies to make that determination. The White House comment comes following Monday's seven-hour meeting in Rome between Chinese senior diplomats and U.S. government officials. A senior American official describes the conversation as intense, telling reporters that National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan voiced deep U.S. concerns about Beijing's alignment with Moscow. Steve Herman, VOA News, Washington. NASA expects an American astronaut to ride a Russian spacecraft home amid tensions between the two countries. AP correspondent Mike Gracia reports. A top NASA official said Monday, despite tensions between the United States and Russia, American astronaut Mark Vandehei will be coming back to Earth on a Russian capsule at the end of the month. During a news conference, NASA space station program manager Joel Montalbano said, I can tell you for sure Mark is coming home on that Soyuz. Uh, we are in communication with our Russian colleagues. There's no fuzz on that. On Tuesday, Vandehei will make American space history, setting a record with 340 days on a single space flight. When Vandehei returns to Earth on March 30th, he will have logged 355 days in space. The world record of 438 continuous days in space belongs to Russia. I'm Mike Gracia. More than a dozen UN agencies and international aid groups said Monday that 161,000 people in war torn Yemen are likely to experience famine over the second half of 2022, a five fold increase from the current figure. The stark warning came in a report by the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification ahead of an annual fundraising conference that the United Nations is hosting on Wednesday. It's a global partnership of 15 U.N. agencies and humanitarian organizations working in Yemen. It tracks and measures food insecurity in conflict-stricken regions. The report underscores the dire situation in the poorest Arab nation that plunged into civil war in 2014. When Yemen's Iran-backed Houthi rebels took control of the capital and much of the country's north, forcing the government to flee to the south, then to Saudi Arabia. Follow us on the VOA mobile app. Reporting by remote, I'm Joe Ramsey.
This is VOA News. Reporting by remote, I'm Joe Ramsey. A trio of Eastern European leaders met Ukraine's president in his besieged capital Tuesday in a defiant act of solidarity as Russian forces pressed in and airstrikes claimed yet more lives in the city under curfew. As talks ground on between Moscow and Kiev in a bid to halt the devastation, the White House announced U.S. President Joe Biden will visit Europe next week to shore up NATO's unity as war rages on its eastern flank. Talks between Russia and Ukraine will continue Wednesday, AP correspondent Mike Gracia reports. An advisor to Ukraine's president who spoke to Russian negotiators via video link Monday and Tuesday said the talks were very difficult and vicious. Mikhailo Podolyak said there are fundamental contradictions but added there is certainly room for compromise. Another senior aide to President Volodymyr Zelensky, Deputy Chief of Staff Ihor Zovkva, called talks more constructive and said Russia stopped calling for Ukraine to surrender. This week's talks via video link follow three rounds of negotiations in Belarus that failed to produce any breakthroughs. The talks will continue Wednesday. I'm Mike Gracia. The nearly three-week-old conflict has revived Cold War-level tensions between Moscow and the West and sent more than three million Ukrainians fleeing across the border to seek refuge in neighboring states, according to the UN. As a 35-hour curfew came into force in Kiev, President Volodymyr Zelensky hosted the Polish, Czech, and Slovenian prime ministers in the first visit by foreign leaders to the besieged city since Russia's invasion. Find more on our website at voanews.com or on the VOA mobile app. This is VOA News. The president of Ukraine continues to appeal to Western leaders to establish a no-fly zone over his country, this time addressing lawmakers in Canada. AP correspondent Jackie Quinn reports... Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky received a standing ovation as heard on CTV. Through a translator, Zelensky asked members of Canada's parliament how they would feel to have bombs raining down on their cities. Hear all these severe explosions. And their children dying. Zelensky keeps asking for NATO to establish a no-fly zone. Close the airspace. Please stop the bombing. How many more cruise missiles have to fall on our cities? But Western leaders are resisting, fearing it will escalate into a world war. Wednesday morning, Ukraine's president will make a similar appeal to members of the U.S. Congress. I'm Jackie Quinn. Cameroon's government says it will rebuild hospitals and clinics destroyed by Boko Haram terrorists along the border with Nigeria. VOA's Moki Edwin Kendezka reports. Cameroon's Ministry of Public Health says at least 35 hospitals along the country's border with Nigeria have either been abandoned by medical staff or destroyed by Boko Haram terrorists. Minister of Public Health Manauda Malashi this week visited some of the remaining hospitals along the border. He says, although working and living conditions are very difficult, the few medical staff members in former Boko Haram prone towns and villages are doing their best to save lives. Malashi says Cameroon's president, Paul Bia, has ordered his government to build and equip destroyed hospitals and recruit more health workers. He also says he asked several hundred hospital workers who fled Boko Haram terrorism to return to Cameroon's border with Nigeria. Malashi did not say when the hospitals would be rebuilt, but Cameroon's government says it will spend $300 million this year to reconstruct what Boko Haram destroyed, including hospitals and medical equipment. Government troops have been fighting Boko Haram along the northern border with Nigeria since 2014. Moki. Edwin Kinzaka for VOA News, Yawundi, Cameroon. Recapping our top story, a trio of Eastern European leaders met Ukraine's president in his besieged capital Tuesday. Reporting by remote, I'm Joe Ramsey.
This is VOA News. Reporting by remote, I'm Joe Ramsey. Ukraine's president is appealing for more U.S. help to fight off Russia's invasion, and President Joe Biden says it's coming. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Magani reports. Speaking to Congress via an interpreter from the Ukrainian capital, Volodymyr Zelensky said the U.S. knows the horrors of attacks from Pearl Harbor to 9-11. Our country experience the same every day, right now. And while thanking America and its allies for aid they've already given. I call on you to do more. From sanctions to air defenses, the president was watching at the White House residence. He was convincing in significant speech and laid out details of aid he was already prepared to announce another 800 million dollars worth including anti-aircraft systems drones and grenade launchers we're going to continue to have their backs as they fight for their freedom sagar magani washington later wednesday president biden called vladimir putin a war criminal and his sharpest condemnation of the russian leader since the invasion began <laughs> Oh, I, I, I think he is a war criminal. Russian forces destroyed a theater in Mariupol where hundreds of people were sheltering Wednesday and rained fires on other cities, Ukrainian authorities said, even as the two sides projected optimism over efforts to negotiate an end to the fighting. The airstrike ripped apart the center of the once elegant building where hundreds of civilians had been living. Many people were buried in the rubble, according to a statement, though there's no word on how many have been killed or injured. Find more at voanews.com. This is VOA News. The United Nations' highest court called on Russia to immediately halt its invasion of Ukraine in a preliminary decision that is binding but may be difficult to enforce. For VOA, Lisa Bryant has more from Paris on the ruling by the Hague-based International Court of Justice. The preliminary decision read by Joan Donahue, president of the International Court of Justice, was unambiguous. The Russian Federation shall immediately suspend the military operations that it commenced on 24 February 2022 in the territory of Ukraine. She also addressed the widening humanitarian fallout of the war. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky praised the ICJ's decision in a tweet. He warned that ignoring the court's order would isolate Russia even further. The ICJ ruling is just a first take by the world court. It may only mark a symbolic victory for Ukraine, since it will be difficult, if not impossible, to enforce. Kyiv filed the case to the ICJ days after Russia's invasion last month, challenging Russia's claim the move aimed to halt a genocide of pro-Russian separatists there. Moscow argued the ICJ should not impose any measures and had no jurisdiction. The ICJ's own ruling on both its jurisdiction and the merits of the case, much less on the case itself, could take months or years. Lisa Bryant for VOA News, Paris. A powerful magnitude 7.3 earthquake jolted Japan's northeast coast off Fukushima late on Wednesday, leaving two dead and 94 injured, reviving memories of a quake and tsunami that crippled the same region just over a decade earlier. There were some reports of fire, the government said. The Fire and Disaster Management Agency said on Thursday morning, there had been two confirmed deaths and 94 injured, including four seriously. The quake was felt in Tokyo, some 275 kilometers away, where the shaking of buildings was long and pronounced. Hundreds of thousands of homes in the capital were plunged into darkness for an hour or more, although power was fully restored by the early hours of Thursday morning and authorities canceled the earlier tsunami warning. Recapping our top story, Ukraine's president appealed for more U.S. help to fight off Russia's invasion. President Joe Biden says it's coming. Later Wednesday, President Biden called Vladimir Putin a war criminal as Russian forces destroyed a theater in Mariupol where hundreds of people were sheltering. Reporting by remote, I'm Joe Ramsey, VOA News.
This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has entered its fourth week with Russian forces largely bogged down outside major cities and shelling them from a distance, raining havoc on civilians. Officials said a Russian airstrike just before dawn thir- uh, Thursday killed 21 people and destroyed, destroyed a school and community center in Marifa near the northeast city of Kharkiv. The governor of the northern city of Chernihiv said Thursday that it has experienced colossal losses and destruction from Russian artillery and airstrikes with dozens of people killed. The governor said civilians civilians were hiding in basements and shelters without access to utilities. Close to the borders with Belarus and Russia, Chernihiv was among the first Ukrainian cities to come under attack. When the invasion began on February 24th, about 280,000 people lived there. The U.S. House of Representatives has voted to further restrict Russian trade after its invasion of Ukraine. AP correspondent Mike Gracia has more. Congress is moving to further punish Russia's economy for its invasion of Ukraine. The House voted overwhelmingly Thursday to suspend normal trade relations with Russia and Belarus. The vote was 424 to 8, with 8 Republicans voting no. The action, in coordination with the European Union and group of seven countries, would revoke most favored nation trade status for Russia. The Senate is expected to take up the measure for final passage. Mike Gracia, Washington. In the besieged southern city of Mariupol, there was an ongoing search for survivors after authorities said a Russian airstrike Wednesday hit a theater where hundreds of people were taking shelter. In the capital, Kiev, a fire broke out in an apartment building early Thursday after it was hit by a downed Russian rocket. VOA News. A judge in Honduras has granted a U.S. request to extradite former Honduran President Juan Orlando Hernandez to face drug trafficking and weapons charges. The decision Wednesday came a month after Honduran authorities arrested Hernandez at his home in Tegucigalpa. Hernandez has denied any wrongdoing and can appeal the judge's ruling. The U.S. extradition request said that since 2004, Hernandez allowed tons of cocaine from Venezuela and Colombia to travel through Honduras on its way to the United States, while protecting drug traffickers from investigation in exchange for millions of dollars in bribes. New York prosecutors have repeatedly implicated Hernandez as a co-conspirator in his brother's 2019 drug trafficking trial. The brother, Juan Antonio Tony Hernandez, was found guilty of drug and weapons charges and sentenced to life in prison. Two British Iranian nationals who were jailed in Iran arrived in Britain Thursday to emotional homecomings. Nazanin Zagari Ratcliffe was met by her husband, Richard Ratcliffe, and their seven year old daughter, Gabriella. At an Air Force base west of London in the early hours of Thursday morning, it was the first time the family had been together in six years. Also on the flight was 67-year-old British-Iranian businessman uh, Anusha Ashuri, who was jailed in 2017 for espionage. There haven't been many details available on the negotiations, but London confirmed it had repaid a long-standing debt to Tehran ahead of the detainees' release. Critics say Iran is increasingly engaging in hostage diplomacy in its dealings with the West. A media group running several popular TV and radio channels in Afghanistan announced on Thursday that it had been instructed by Taliban authorities to stop showing drama series on television. Mobi Group, which owns Tolo TV and Lamar TV, said the order was issued by the Taliban's Ministry for the Promotion of Islamic Virtue and Prevention of Vice. The group said it is obeying the order and will cease broadcasting foreign drama series beginning Thursday, but it said the move was temporary. The TV series are mostly Turkish and Indian. Their popularity has made them a financial lifeline for the troubled private media sector in the country. And a Cambodian court Thursday convicted exiled opposition leader Sam Rainsy and 20 other opposition figures and activists of treason and other charges. It's a ruling question by human rights advocates. A, the court in Phnom Penh sentenced Rainsy and seven exile leaders to 10 years in prison in absentia. Reporting via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. This is VOA News.